Hey, what's up, guys? You know who it is. Russell Varn from SouthernPitchTeam.com. Here to continue our team-by-team -team breakdown of the Southern Conference. This week, we're going to be taking a look at arguably the most storied program in Southern Conference history, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Now, I think everybody knows that the program's been a bit of a slump ever since they gave up the triple option. But it's alright. Everything is right in the world. Once again, the triple option is back at Statesboro. New head coach Jeff Monken is bringing in the triple option with him from Georgia Tech. And not just that, he's bringing with him a quarterback who can run the system as well. Jay Bochal is going to be taking over as a starter for the Eagles this fall. And he should make or pay off immediate dividends for the Eagles. He is going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the Southern Conference before his time is done. And he's going to be a well-known name if he isn't already. Speaking of well-known names, it's time to move on to the running back position where you're not going to find too many, but there are some breakout stars to look out for. Adam Urbano, last year's leading rusher, is gone. He transferred, but it's fine. He wasn't even the second or third best rusher on the team last year. Zeke Grousier should have been the starter, but he was injured and missed most of last year. He's going to be starting this year. He, everyone says he's healthy and he's back with a vengeance. He's going to be a scary man to watch out for. Now for the names to look out for that I was talking about earlier. Aaron Fisher, freshman, and this is the big guy, Robert Brown. I've been hearing a lot about this freshman. He's supposed to have a lot of potential. He's supposed to be able to have lots of big playability. Keep an eye out for him. But before his time is done in Statesboro, he's going to be a well-known name. Wide receiver position. They do lose Jameer Valentine, but they returned four of their six top receivers last year, and all of them are rising sophomores. That's a pretty scary thought. That's a good young core of receivers right there. Offensive line, good starting. Good starting players. Overall depth is a little bit lacking. The squad did struggle last year in giving up sacks. They finished less than the conference with 43 sacks given up. But the number is clearly going to go down. A, because it's, you're not going to be giving up 43 sacks in back-to-back -back years. B, they're switching to a triple option. The team is not going to be passing a third as much as it used to under the hatch attack. Big names to watch out for on this offensive line. Brett Moore and Brandavious Mann, which also, that's a great name. Props to Mr. and Mrs. Mann on that one. Let's move to the defensive side of the ball. Defensive line, the only name that you really should have to know, Brent Russell. He's just a sophomore, but already after his freshman year has established himself as one of the top defensive tackles in the conference. During his freshman year, he ended up being among the league leaders, or conference leaders, excuse me, in tackles for loss, in sacks, and in forced fumbles. He is just a monster down there in the trenches. And he's going to be getting some help at the defensive end position now, where Dion DeBose, who played linebacker last year and led the team in tackles, has moved. And everything I've been reading about online says that he's making a great transition to, or transition, excuse me, to the defensive end position. He's getting off the ball really quick and has been making a couple plays as well. Linebacker position, it... I think is a good group, not great, good. Darius Eubanks is going to be leading the group, and he finished second in tackles last year. The other probable stars are going to be Josh Rowe and senior R.J. Webb, who is trans or, uh, transitioning as well. He's moving from safety to the linebacker position. Defensive backs, this is a group or a unit that last year finished third in the Southern Conference in interceptions, but did finish sixth out of nine teams in passing yards given up. So there is some room for improvement, but there are definitely players there who can make plays. Derek Hayden, a fellow blogger here at SouthernPCN.com as well, he is the undisputed leader of this defensive backfield. And the cornerbacks, also pretty solid as well. You have LaRon Scott, who ended up leading the team last year in breakups, and uh, Hudson, presume, should be the other starter. He's a pretty solid cornerback as well. Special teams, the Eagles have arguably and probably the best special teams unit in the Southern Conference, at least when it comes to kickers and punters. Kicker, Adrian Mora, one, or no, the best kicker in the conference most likely, and one of the best kickers in the nation. I'm just going to say it, it's true. He's going to be on a lot of uh, kickers awards lists, and you got to watch out for him. He made 72% of his kicks last year, and he is definitely one of the top kickers in the conference. 
punter, Charlie Edwards. Finished second last year in punting average, averaging 39.6. Only Appalachian State had a higher average than him. So like I said, special teams unit, very strong for the Eagles. As far as the season prediction goes, it's not going to be a return to glory just yet for the Eagles. I'm seeing a 5-6 to six win season for them, though they could make some surprises. They do host Elon, Wofford, Appalachian State, and Sanford all at home this year. And I say, no, I guarantee they're going to upset at least one of those teams. Good times are coming back for you guys in Statesboro. You're just going to have to wait a year or two for it. Just be patient. Trust me, it's going to work out for you guys. Now, that's all for this week. Tune in next week. We're going to be taking a look at the newest Southern Conference me member, Sanford Bulldogs. And just remember, you want to continue to look good like me? Visit SouthernPiskin.com. Check out the store where you can pick up some nice polos uh, kind of like this one. That's all from me, Russell Varner. I'll see you guys next week.